God communicates to us well ahead of time. We uh, understand what God wants to do. Many times there's a warning that God God gives us. He um, He reveals to us what the enemy is up to. And when we are tuned into God with the work of the Spirit in us, you know, we can pray things through and we can also act on those things. Okay? Uh, and uh, that's what we were talking about in the last class. Now today, we will talk about persistence in prayer. Um, persistence in prayer is definitely necessary because we, we uh, do see that there are several promises of God, uh, some of which you know, may need for us to wait for the right time. So uh, while we wait, for example, Abraham, Abraham also needed to persist in prayer. He needed to wait upon the Lord for the promised child to be born to him. So there is a need for patience. There is a need for perseverance. And there is a need for persistence. Meaning we continue to keep standing on that promise and we don't give up. So that is what we will look at uh, in a little more depth today. Before we get into the discussion, there are two passages which are very helpful for us to read today. One is from Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 8. If you have your notes open in front of you, page 40 is uh, where I'm at. Uh, and uh, this reference is given there, Luke 11, verses 5 through 8. And then there's also Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. So one person can please read Luke 11 and the other Luke 18, please. Uh, okay, you know, I can see you reading, but you have to unmute. Ma'am, Luke 11 verses? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, 5 to 8. Luke 11 verses 5 to 8. Ah, then yes. he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me. And I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't brother, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in the bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread, because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sutkino, for reading that passage. So this is about a friend disturbing another uh, friend in the night because he's in need of bread. So he's desperate and uh, reaches out, you know, uh, to uh, a friend at a very odd time. But because of the persistence of the, uh, the person who's asking, uh, the friend reluctantly yet surely response okay, to the request. So we see the persistence here and the response to the persistence. Similarly, there is another passage that talks about persistence, which is Luke 18. So uh, the next person, anybody, if you can please read Luke 18, that will be wonderful. 1 to 8 verses. Luke 18 was 1 to 8. Now he was telling them a yes. parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart saying, in a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night and will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, he will not, he will, will he find faith on the earth? Yes, thank you, John. Thank you for reading Luke 18. So again, another um, 
uh, example of persistence. And in this case, there is a judge who is not even a God-fearing person. And yet, because of the request of a widow, uh, he responds. Okay? He actually is wearied, or we would use our regular terms and say fed up of the uh, persistence of this widow. She keeps saying, okay, protect me from my uh, uh, enemy, protect me from my avenger. She's repeatedly saying the same thing. And though the judge, it says he is not righteous in any way. He doesn't fear God. But the repeated request uh, pushes him to make a decision for this lady in favor of her. Okay, so what is God saying? God is saying, look, if a person like that, who's not even a God-fearing person, can respond to persistence or patience on the part of an individual, think about this. How much more God? Because we know that our God favors us. Our God loves us. He is not unjust. He is not unrighteous like the judge whom we see in this uh, illustration, but God who is good, don't you think that he will answer readily? Or in other words, uh, even though our waiting may seem long, it's actually not that long because we have a God who is willing to respond. But for whatever reason, you know, there is, there is a period of time uh, that we are having to uh, wait for to see that promise fulfilled. But God's heart is ready and God is for us is what uh, this passage wants to tell us. Uh, so both of these accounts, one is in Luke 11, where uh, we saw that a, a friend who is unwilling late in the night, he just because of the persistence, he's like, okay, just stop calling me now. It's late night. I want to sleep. For that sake, you want bread? Okay, take. Take whatever you want. Just leave. Right? So he responds in that manner, but he responds in a favorable manner. Uh, and here the judge responds in a favorable manner. And God is saying, look, if these people reluctantly can respond positively to the persistence, of human beings, how much more God, who is not a reluctant God, who is a willing God and who wants to see his promises fulfilled in our life. So God is actually encouraging us through uh, both of these accounts. And when we study two more scriptures from the book of Hebrews, we are uh, encouraged to have faith and patience. It is through faith and patience that we inherit the promises of God. And we should not become sluggish, it says. We should not become sluggish as we wait upon the promises of God. But instead, trust in the Lord that he will uh, you know, cause the manifestation of that promise. Or the promise will be fulfilled in other words. So Jesus taught us to persevere in prayer. Uh, Jesus, in, as we started reading in Luke chapter 18, man, men should not lose heart, but they should pray. That's what Jesus said. So sometimes, you know, in our life situation, when we are trusting, when we are holding on, and something doesn't seem to be moving, even though we know that it is in God's will, it can be trying. It can be painful. For us okay, to wait on God uh, for, for a long period of time. But Jesus told us, don't lose heart. Men should not lose heart, but you must pray. So how do we continue with our persistence? Through prayer. Don't get discouraged. But instead of getting discouraged, you pray. You persevere in prayer. You be persistent in prayer. You be consistent in prayer. You keep holding on in prayer. Prayer. Now, we have discussed this earlier. Does it mean that we are begging God or we have lost our faith? Uh, and, and that is the reason we are going back to God again and again and asking him for what, what he needs to do for us. No, it's not that we are trying to uh, afflict God with our repeated requests. Similar to what that friend did or what that uh, widow woman did. It's not like that. But 
what we are doing is we are saying god we trust you this is your word and we we know that you are coming through for us okay so when we pray about matters for a longer period of time and we've discussed this you know initially maybe uh, our heart is also not in a place where we are assured that god is going to do this but as we keep praying what happens our heart undergoes that change our heart is aligned it becomes aligned you know to the will of god and through the work of his spirit in our lives god is able to do that so we come to a place in ourselves where we are in a place of confident assurance so our prayer sort of changes from that place of um, you know clarity where we are saying okay god you know you have you have confirmed to my heart that this is what you are going to do i'm no longer anxious i'm waiting in expectation i'm giving you thanks oh god for what you are going to do in my life and uh, i know that my request has been granted because it is in line with your will it is in line with your purpose so the the pray kind of changes uh as we are waiting upon the lord but i hope you understand what i'm saying we're not saying persistence in prayer is like the two examples that we saw where we go bang 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 you know like irritate god and say when are you going to do it when are you going to do it you said you'll do it do it do it do it no it's not that kind of a begging then we speak about persistence but it is about staying on the promise okay praying through the promise yes you pray through it repeatedly but your heart is also journeying along where you've gone from having doubts to a place of assurance and finally a place of thanksgiving so you're waiting uh, in prayer with thanksgiving trusting that god is going to uh, cause something to be fulfilled or manifested in our lives uh, and we are encouraged you know in scripture to be persistent in prayer to uh, be steadfast in prayer romans 12 12 even that verse says we persevere uh, and be steadfast continuing steadfastly in prayer so don't give up just because you know something didn't happen in our lives uh, it's human nature sometimes we just get tired and we say not at all happening i'm not at all getting the job why should i keep pray maybe god is not listening to us but scriptures encourage us and say don't lose heart keep praying be steadfast keep going on there are lots of such passages ephesians 6:18 says being watchful to this end with all perseverance so continue don't stop don't become sluggish you know even the uh, the people in uh, the the word of god you know those who have received the promise and we repeatedly mentioned abraham's name faith and patience faith and patience so patience is required on our part and persistence steadfastness in prayer uh, is also helpful for us to receive those promises so continue continue earnestly in prayer colossians 42 says thessalonians 5:17 pray without ceasing so all these are encouragement for us to continue in prayer now why is it that sometimes we are having to wait for the answers uh, you know to come through in our lives there can be several reasons some reasons are listed here one is the timing of god okay? so we know that god is outside of time but we dwell in time uh, and even in the spiritual realm when god says okay yes and amen so and so has asked for this prayer request granted it is done it is outside of time but for that manifestation to happen in our zone which is we live in a time zone okay uh there is something we talk about we we say the fullness of time there has to be the right time for that thing to happen so we have to trust in the lord and wait upon the lord till that fullness of time you know we say kairos the kairos time so this uh, a good example is when the world was corrupted with sin uh we didn't see jesus being born immediately 
but Galatians 4.4, 4, it says in the fullness of time, the fullness of time, the son of God, uh, that he was manifested, he was sent. Uh, so God, did he have the plan of redemption? Yes. Before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain for us. So it was in God's heart. It was already a plan that God had before man ever sinned. But when did Jesus come? The Kairos moment or the right time. There is always a right time uh, that God has ordained for something to happen. So maybe some of us, we are so passionate about ministry and God has already spoken to us about our calling and the things that we are going to be doing in our lives that we want to jump into it right now. And we are praying and saying, God, you know, you said this will be, I'm going to minister like this, like that. When is it going to happen? I'm not doing it right now. How long do I have to wait? Okay. So there's a persistence. There is a, you know, duration there. But just wait on the Lord. Continue to pray. Continue to thank God for the visions that he has put in our hearts. And you just say, Lord, thank you. You've already revealed that, you know, you are going to lead me in this way. I give you praise. I give you thanks. I thank you that you are you are orchestrating things on my behalf. You are putting the right people in touch with me, Lord. You're opening the doors for me. You are equipping me with the knowledge, the wisdom, the skills, the experience that I need to do what you want me to do. Lord, continue to to um, uh, you know give me details of you know how you would want me to to prepare myself for this so basically you don't lose heart but you wait on the lord and yes at the right time the right doors will open so why is it that sometimes we have to wait because it's not god's timing yet it's not god's right timing yet so and we can discuss this so much in detail you can talk about, you know, even the life of Apostle Paul. I'm sure you would have touched on this, uh, touched in other courses. So it is said that there were uh, uh, something like, I hope I'm right about the number of it, something like 17 years or, or something which are known as the silent years of Paul. After his conversion, nobody knew much, you know, much about what ministry he's doing. He was doing it in a, in a quiet way where he had, he had, you know, uh, had to hide because uh, people were not believing him. He turned from a persecutor to a believer. So uh, the people who uh, found out about this, and especially those who were persecutors with him, they wanted to harm and hurt Paul. So for his own safety, he had to go, up, go uh, into hiding. So those years, you don't read too much about Paul, what he was up to, those details we don't have. But at the right time, you know, in Acts 13, you see, Holy Spirit tells the, uh, the people who are praying, ministering unto the Holy Spirit, hmm, set aside for me Barnabas and Saul for the ministry for which I have uh, called them to do. So God moves Paul into the main way of ministering roughly about you know 17 years after his conversion and then if you were to ask paul what were you doing those 17 years how were those 17 years paul can you tell us i'm sure he would have been persevering in prayer trusting in the lord and saying god you who called me you are faithful and for whatever reason i have to go through this phase of preparation go through this phase of phase of waiting upon you and uh, I'm trusting you, Lord, at the right time. So there's always the right timing of God. So we receive promises, but let's hold on. And let's not lose heart. Sometimes it feels like a particular promise. It's not happening at all. Why, Lord, so much time? But trust in the Lord, okay? Trust in the Lord. And at the right time, those things will take place. And uh, let's not be in a hurry to short circuit God's time of preparation. Uh, I've heard this said, God is not in a hurry. God is not in a hurry. Okay? And God uh, wants us to, to be well prepared for what he has called us to do. So uh, stand in prayer, stand in faith. So I just gave you one example. Now, maybe there could be other things in our lives where it's not the right time yet. 
for us to do something you know maybe um, we want to do something for our family build a house or something like that but it's not happening you're praying about it all the time it's not yet happening you want to move into a, a certain career it's not happening doesn't matter if you have the promise of god over your life continue to pray trust in god's timing and say lord this is your what you have spoken to me you will fulfill you are faithful i'm holding on to your word so because of the timing of god we may need to wait we may need to be patient sometimes okay and that's the reason perseverance is required now there can also be times when uh god has granted it but the enemy may bring a hindrance and that is the reason that the promise is not coming through or the answer to our prayer is not seen uh so daniel 10 verses 12 and 13 that is a good passage to look up uh, so can i just request someone please can you turn to daniel chapter 10 and read these two verses 12 and 13 Anyone? Daniel chapter ten was twelve and thirteen. Yes. Then he yes. said yes. to me, "Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard." and i have come because of your words but the prince of the kingdom of persia withstood me 21 days and behold michael one of the chief princes came to help me for i had been left alone there with the kings of persia mm-hmm. thank you thank you roslyn for reading that so here the answer to prayer you know how quickly did it actually come when daniel prayed we noticed that god sent the answer immediately god released the answer immediately but the explanation is given to daniel that there were demonic authorities in the spiritual realm that were preventing the answer from coming through to daniel okay so because of the hindrance in the spiritual realm it took 21 days now we also know that daniel prayed he prayed for those 21 days he sought the lord he uh, you know he he was persistent in prayer and because of engaging in prayer that's where the whole spiritual warfare aspect comes in when we are praying you know uh, also you notice that michael is sent to to engage in that warfare up there uh, in the in the spiritual realm and finally after 21 days after all that struggle the answer is uh, coming through to daniel so sometimes god gives the answer immediately but there can be these disturbances okay, because of uh, the work of the evil one in our lives and that also causes delay in answered prayers so how do we deal with it how do we deal with uh, you know demonic disturbances and things like that answer is again very simple you pers- be persistent now when we are praying we are continuing to pray yes there is a delay yes there is uh, there seems to be a hindrance but our prayer uh, is also bringing us that release now you see how daniel is praying and uh, through those prayers god is god is sending in the angels to fight on behalf of daniel and that answer is breaking through right after waiting on the lord in prayer so whatever happens continue to pray now how how are our prayers uh, causing things to shift in the spiritual realm we may not know all the details but one thing we know that our prayers are making a difference uh, up there and god is breaking those strongholds god is working against those demonic powers and even if the delay is because of these demonic powers or because of satan and his tactics we don't have to be afraid it's a matter of time the answer will come because we are victorious right we are praying and we are breaking these strongholds in the name of jesus so 
sometimes there is a delay because of demonic interception in our lives okay uh, so remember that that could be another reason why uh, we, there is a delay the third reason is uh, we may not have the right heart attitude okay maybe the timing is also correct god wants to do something in our lives god wants to release a blessing in our lives but a heart is not in the right place with the lord and we are praying and praying and praying and we are saying lord why why am i not getting this opportunity no why am i not moving to the next level but maybe god is noticing that we are wanting that for the sake of uh, you know there is pride in our heart so there is some kind of an envy the motives of our heart are not right so god may want to wait till a heart is in the right place so we we want to do the right thing for example i'll just tell you one example maybe uh, like i want to preach okay and i'm feeling bad i'm saying lord you only gave me the vision that i am going to be uh, proclaiming your word and i want to preach i want to preach you know i'm praying things like that but that chance is not coming but maybe you know god is god is saying look your intention is good my will for you is that only but your heart is not in the right place why do you want to preach what is the motive of your heart so our answers could be like i might say god i want to uh, you know uh, i want to preach a good sermon or uh, i want others to know that i am called to preach or i want everybody to think that i speak well so deep in the depths of my heart my reasons could be wrong the motives of my heart could be wrong god may say okay you know what nancy hold on you want to do the right thing but your heart is not right yet so let's wait okay and then you're waiting you're waiting you're waiting till the heart aligns and you come to this place in your heart where you're saying lord i just want to live for you whichever way i want to serve you whichever way you know only preaching i don't care anymore <laughs> whatever you tell me to do do i will do you know i just want to serve you so when you come to that place your heart is in the right place then god says ah now you are ready you are ready to depend on me for everything so fine you know uh, even if i i give you a big opportunity you will not become proud you are in a better place now come on you take it up so you see how god also is concerned about the condition of our hearts so till we complete you know all obedience uh or a heart condition matches uh what he wants for us right there could be some delays and we may be wondering lord why 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 it's not happening why am i not getting why that door is not opening but god is saying i'm working in you okay and let that work be done in you so these all could be the reasons now we're talking about completing obedience there is an example in our notes here where uh, uh, a preacher that she she uh, he shares about a woman who was praying for uh, an unsaved family member but uh, the person was praying with a very self righteous attitude and saying ah oh, you know these people uh, they are not they they are not living for god look at me i am living for god you know so the the request is legitimate you want somebody in your family to be saved but the attitude with which you are going about praying for that person is not correct so when this lady who is praying for her family member uh, you know god speaks to her and ministers to her heart and she changes her attitude towards her family member she repents of the wrong attitude so gives uh, you know the the family members for their their bad behavior against her and all of that and then she goes ahead and prays and asks god lord let the let the deception let the veils which cover their their eyes let that be removed though she prayed for her family member for many years she didn't see them come to christ but once she changed her heart attitude in a matter of months those people apparently they were saved okay they also became believers so what was the difference here the attitude of the person who is praying so sometimes there is a work which needs to be done in me and that is causing the delay in the answer from god 
So yeah, these are all things. They could also be sins that God may be wanting us to deal with. Uh, and uh, it's only when we do that, that he is able to open up the next door and lead us forward in Christ. So things like that, you know, that we must remember. Uh, so delays can be because of so many different reasons. Uh, but our, the call for us is to follow God and to be patient, to persevere and be persistent in prayer. Now, another wonderful example of somebody who was persistent in prayer is Elijah. We have talked about Elijah earlier. We looked at uh, First Kings chapter 17, where, uh, you know, God uh, speaks to him and he releases the word, you know, that God puts in his mouth and, and, and uh, you know, he, he, he proclaims that word that this is going to happen. Again, 1 Kings 18, there again we see how God speaks to him and says that, you know, it is going to rain. So he goes and he tells King Ahab that. But later on, we observe, you know, in that same passage down when we come to verses 41 through 46, Elijah is actually praying the revealed will of God. But that sounds strange. Why should we pray and wait for something that God has already promised? He said he'll do it. No, then that's it. When God says, it's done. But remember, we talked about believers' dominion. We talked about uh, co-laboring with God, working together with God. So God has put us in charge and Jesus taught us to pray, thy will be done on earth. So there is a part for you and me to play. God's will is clarified. God's will has been revealed to us. Yet, even Elijah understood this concept of co-laboring as a prophet. And, you know, Elijah moved in miracles and you know, supernatural things that, that took place during his time and in his ministry. We would think, what, Elijah, you said no, it's going to rain, finished. God said it and you said it, you are Elijah. It has to happen. But he understood the concept of co-laboring with God. So he held on to that word. God said, okay, I will, I will send rain. It is going to rain. So he goes and he prays. How much does he pray? We see that seven times, seven times he tells his servant, go look, go look whether the cloud has come or not. So he prays, 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 prays till there is a sign of the cloud. And at that point, we don't know the spiritual dynamics. Somehow within himself, he said, oh, okay, you know, like I hear the sound of the abundance of the rain. And then, you know, he, he, he just runs from that point to escape the rain. But the point is, even Elijah knew the concept of co-laboring with God, which takes a while, okay, which takes patience, which takes persistence and perseverance. So even if there is a word which God has spoken over our lives, it may take some time. But at this, but the, the important thing is that we must pray. And when we are engaging in prayer, that's when God is also able to cause that thing to happen. Now, what if we don't pray? What if Elijah didn't pray that day? My guess is it may not have rained. How can you say that? You know, God said it, right? But there is a reason why it's in the Bible that he prayed seven times. Is praying seven times easy? No, it's not. We, we can get discouraged and say, why should I pray seven times, Lord? But perseverance, till it happens, you know, we pray through. You know, some people use that, uh, um, it's called an acronym, right? Like push, pray until something happens. So there are times when God's promise is there, but we have to pray until something happens. About Elijah, in James chapter 5, we are told, you know, again, okay, I think it's good. Somebody should read this. James 5, verses 16 through 20. It's here in your notes also. James 5, 16 through 20, please, page 41. James chapter 5. Uh, 16 to 20 
confess yeah. your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Divya. So here we are told that Elijah was a man with a nature like us. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. So Elijah, a man with a nature like us, means he's a human being. So we are also human beings. So when Elijah prayed, you saw the effects of it. Based on the word of God, it will not rain, it didn't rain, and then it will rain. He prayed the same thing and it actually rained. So we are being encouraged here that as human beings, when we pray the will of God, which has been spoken to us, we too will see the results the way Elijah saw. But we have to be willing to co-labor with God the way Elijah co-labored in prayer. Uh, and also here, two things are there. One is about praying for the sick person. And in the end, there is a mention of a sinner, right? Uh, somebody who has gone far away from God. So both of these examples are mentioned in the same passage. So it's, it's like, you know, sometimes when we are praying for somebody who is sick, or somebody who has gone away from God, we might have to apply persistence in prayer because it's not easy. Okay, and many of you, I'm sure you will, you will also say that, yeah, I've been praying for so long for this healing to take place or, uh, you know, this person to come to Christ. Yes, there are some testimonies where we say, wow, it happened immediately. It happened right now. And how did it happen when Jesus ministered? It happened immediately. Healings happened immediately. That is the goal that we are moving towards. For, but for whatever reason, whatever reason, sometimes we don't see instant, immediate results in healing. Or in the same way, you know, you're praying for your father, mother, long time. You don't see instant results. And that can be very discouraging. But here in the same passage, we are also shown about the persistence of Elijah. So let's not give up. Basically, persevere. Be persistent. Yes, God reveals his will, but we are called to pray through. Hold on till we see it happen. So, uh, yeah. And later, you know, there is uh, in the next uh, section here, there is about, uh, there are three passages given. Uh, and uh, it's about Daniel pressing in. Because Daniel, from the scriptures, he had an idea. Like the, Israel was in exile under Babylon. But through the scriptures, he had an idea that there is going to be a release you know, after a certain number of years. Uh, and also like Jeremiah prophesied it and, and all of that. So you see that once Daniel comes to know what God is going to do, you find him praying. Okay, praying a lot. Why, why are you praying, Daniel? God already said no. After so many years, he will bring you out. You will not be under the Babylon needs anymore. But when we come to know the will of God, even Daniel understood, I have to co-labor. God has revealed this to me. I have to now start co-laboring. I have to pray. Uh, I have to persevere till we see it happen. Okay. So uh, that is that other section there. Once again, encouraging us, just like Daniel, just like, uh, you know, your uh, Elijah, that even if, the will of God has been revealed to us. Let us continue to co-labor with God. So just, um, yeah, uh, I think we have only about seven minutes left. So if there are any questions, any thoughts, you could uh, please go ahead and share it about waiting on the Lord and persevering. Okay. 
Okay, maybe I'll just uh, share a quick testimony here, and this is about my father. Uh, so my father, like, uh, he is from a like a Christian background, but then uh, uh, you know he never really liked the whole concept of uh, you know like being a believer and uh, salvation and things like that. And so uh, from when I remember, from when as a kid, I used to always pray for my dad that he should be saved. He should be saved. Uh, you know, and it took several years. And uh, what I wanted to say is, uh, like last, was it last year? I, I don't exactly remember which year this was. Just a few years ago, um, uh, it was one of our normal like evenings where I, I had just made some tea and I gave it to my dad, uh, and I was talking to him. And I was just saying, like, okay, so what do you think about uh, Jesus and all? And mind you, if I had done this kind of a thing a few years ago, my dad would have been furious and said, uh, don't teach me about God and about salvation. <laughs> but actually, like about two or three years ago, I sat and I asked him, so what do you think? Uh, do you think you want to accept Christ? Uh, and uh, can, can I pray with you? Will you repeat this prayer after me? So... Uh, Actually, he did, and uh, very emotionally also. He said, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about it, and yeah, you pray, I'll pray with you. And uh, I prayed with my dad, and he accepted uh, Christ, like, officially. I knew his heart was already in that place of accepting, but uh, he accepted it. And, uh, I mean, the bigger uh, story is, as some of you know, that my father's not well. He is a, a stroke a patient. Um, right after that week, and it, it's amazing. Right after that week, I think he had a, a, a very major stroke episode. Uh, and from that time, he cannot speak words. He speaks a few words now. He can't speak many words anymore. Uh, so, like, I always look back at that and I think, oh, my goodness. What if I had not prayed the salvation prayer with him? He was able to say every word. And, you know, he kind of like, okay, dear Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I accept you. But a week after that, till now, he can only speak a few words. He can't speak many words right now. But one thing we know that he is saved. He's born again. Right. And God is sustaining him in a very beautiful way uh, in his health and everything. So, but when I think about my father's salvation, it's been years, years and years. Sometimes I used to pray and think, Lord, why? He is not, he's not accepting how many years are we going to wait for this, right? But in matters of praying for your family to come to know the Lord or maybe healing, some of us might be struggling and thinking, Lord, how long is it going to take? How much have I got to pray? But just to encourage you and say that God is faithful, right? God is faithful and uh, we will see, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, so yeah, just just a word out there for those who are praying for your own families. Don't give up. God will God will make it happen. So uh, yes, any other questions? Any other thoughts about perseverance in prayer? Praise God. Yeah. by God. It's always amazing when I think about it, how God works. Anything else about waiting and praying? Let me share one of my friends actually. Uh, now he's serving the Lord. Yes. yes. Uh, actually, there was a time he came and uh, stayed with the same apartment where actually I am staying. And uh, when he came to know that, okay, I am a Christian and I serve the Lord, then uh, he said to his friends, don't mingle with this person or else actually he will uh, convert you. And uh, 
I think uh, it took almost three years and uh, that he came to Christ. And uh, just to make the story short, the when actually for the first time I invite him uh, for a birthday celebration and uh, he came and uh, have a fellowship with us. Uh, then once I say the gospel and he heard just the gospel and he said, okay, maybe he will convert me. So he forgot. Uh, but his friend uh, came to Christ and left the uh, room. But this boy, actually, when we are praying continuously for him, and uh, once actually he said, okay, uh, I just want to uh, come with your church. And uh, I think uh, even uh, when my friend who is a pastor, even when I introduced him, nobody thought that he will come. And... Uh, even when my family, they were praying continuously for him, even my friends. And uh, because he was a very negative guy, he always uh, said negative things about Christianity and about the pastors that they forcefully convert people. But in between, actually, he was hearing uh, the word of God. Whenever actually he comes uh, to our home, they okay, have philosophy with us. And uh, many times, actually, we pray and uh, say the word of God. And praise God that... Uh, Though we didn't believe that okay he will come to Christ, but it took almost three years, and I think three plus years to come to Christ. And when he once decided that I will uh, serve the Lord, even we are surprised that how this guy uh, he actually made a decision to follow Christ, and now he uh, made a decision to uh, serve the Lord. So it's really amazing, and uh, the things maybe I will say that uh, sometimes. We will not we cannot believe that the, the things will happen but when we trust the lord god will so uh, maybe amazing and we will be surprised when we see the result yes thank you thank you subhashish and uh, you know it's wonderful to know that uh, through prayer people have given their lives to christ uh, despite you know the duration of uh, the period of waiting but we must persevere, we must pray, we must not give up, okay? Not just in the in the matter of seeing people come to the Lord, but every other promise of God that we are waiting on, be encouraged uh, and uh, trust the Lord. So any anything, any question or anything right now? If not, we will wrap up and we could uh, pick up the questions also in the next class. Yes, ma'am, I have one question. Yeah, okay, quickly, Rubika. Yeah. Ma'am, when we pray, sometimes there is yeah. a quick answer from God. And sometimes it's giving late. Why, ma'am? It depends upon our faith and patient or what? Yeah, so that's what, no, Rubika, we are saying that uh, there can be many reasons. You have answered, you have given one reason yourself. One is faith. So if there is no faith, then obviously, you know, it, it will not work. Uh, and we discuss few more reasons today. There is a right timing for the answer to come, or even if God has given the right the answer, there is a hindrance in the spiritual realm, and that's why it's not coming through, or a heart attitude is not yet correct, and that is why there is a delay. God is waiting for us to change, for us to receive that answer. So these are some reasons why. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Right answer. Okay, sure. Great. Okay, thank you. All right, class. So I think we will wrap up for today. And uh, let's meet tomorrow. I would like to request somebody to close with a word of prayer. Uh, anyone, please unmute and pray. I'll pray. Yes, yes, Sylvia. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, uh, for this wonderful opportunity, Father, Lord, to sit at your feet, Lord, uh, in the fellowship, Lord, of uh, your children, Father, Lord, uh, hearing from your word, 
uh, Father, uh, Lord, being uh, enriched, Father, in our hearts, in our spirit, in our mind, Father, with the uh, truth, Lord, how you want us to pray, Lord, uh, persistently, oh, Father, with perseverance, Father, Lord. Thank you for encouraging us, Father. Uh, thank you for giving us the, uh, uh, Lord, uh, once again, affirming us, Father, that you are a faithful God. Yes, the word says Abraham waited patiently and received what was promised. Yes. Yes, Father, Lord, we pray, Father, that you, uh, Lord, help us pray in the uh, according to your will, Father, align to your words, Lord, align to uh, the uh, uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit, Father, Lord, uh, that we may be able to. Uh, Lord, uh, align our hearts, Father, our will, uh, Father, Lord, our life, uh, Father, uh, as per your desire, Father, Lord. Thank you that you have promised us, Father, that you will grant all the desires of our heart, Father, Lord, according to your riches and glory. Yes, Father, Lord, as we trust in you, Father, Lord, you're faithful and good, uh, Father, to uh, answer us, Father, Lord. Thank you that you are attentive to our prayers, Father, Lord. Thank you that your word says that the uh, lions may grow um, uh, hungry and weary, Father, but uh, one who uh, waits upon you will be renewed, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all your promises, Father. Lord, we hold on to your promises and we know that uh, your words are true. Thank you that you are a faithful God. You are a good God and you are a loving Father. Now, thank you and praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Divya. Uh, yes, thank you for praying and thank you everyone for joining. God bless you. Continue to have a wonderful rest of the day and we will meet again tomorrow. Take care. Again, Sitkenu has uh, initiated a group here. What is this group, Sitkenu? Oh, he's left the call, I think. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Bye.